morning. Welcome to Go Church Beirut. My name is Rafi. I am Richard. We are very happy that you are joining our online gathering. This morning, Go Church Beirut is visiting the cedars of Lebanon. We love our country and we are going to look at the lessons the cedar tree have for us in our message called Rooted. What is Go Church Beirut? We are part of a family of churches that are working together to reach the world. Our family of churches began in England more than 20 years ago. Today, we are gathered in Manchester, Bradford, Liverpool, and now here in Beirut. At Go Church Beirut, we do everything in groups, gatherings, and teams. Today is the second Sunday of the month and what we call our Big Sunday Gathering. When possible, we like to do this in person and enjoy a meal together. But today, we are gathering online. Please, like our page if you have not done so. Every week, we gather in grow groups that meet in person and online to study in detail the message you will hear today. We have a group open for you and I want you to know you are invited. We also serve one in other teams. There are certain teams working right now. As you watch this, our team is live in the comment section now and our prayer team is available to pray with you. Leave a comment or an emoji now to let us know you are watching with us. Go Church Beirut is an English-speaking church based upon the earliest tradition of Christian living in the Bible. That means we are spirit-filled, Bible-loving family. Go Church is your place to love, grow, and go. We want everyone to experience the un unconditional love of God, grow in His love, then spread His love to their world. What can you expect today? In just a moment, our guest worship team from World of Life Church is going to lead us in a worship song. Why do we do this? Because it is important to praise the Lord with our mouth and it will help us to be ready to hear God's words. I have learned at Go Church Beirut, my life changed when I opened my mouth and it filled it with God's words. An easy way to start doing that is just sing along with the music. The words will be on the screen. Right after that song, Gilbert, part of our Go Church Beirut team, is going to share a message called Rooted. Then Roy, Another member of our team will tell us how we can put this message into practice. Just before our friends lead us in a song, I want to ask you to do two things. First, I want you to focus. Turn off things that might take your attention. It is not an accident that you are watching. This God is going to use our team to speak to you. Don't miss what Jesus is saying to you this morning. Also, I want to share this stream with at least one other person. This message will not only benefit you, but will bless and help others. Now, let's worship Jesus together. Come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones. Come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones. Sing to you, try bones. See you covered in life, and the valleys bloom like a rosebud in the light. Hear the call to attention, feel the change in the air. For the ground is dry, but the clouds are overhead. Ooh, I'ma sing it again. Come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones.
Good morning, and welcome to our online service for the month of May, right here at Go Church Beirut. My name is Gilbert, and today I'm going to be sharing a message titled Rooted. You see, we're in Lebanon, and things seem to have been changing so fast. If you ask most people in Lebanon, things over the last five or ten years ago would not be recognizable today. I've had so many friends visit me in the last years, and I've taken them out to see the nature and to see the city. And I wonder if they came back, if they re would recognize many of the places they've been to in the city, if they would recognize many of the smiles on people's faces. See, the situation in Lebanon's affected so many people. It seems as though the economy is dissolving. The morale of the people is on the ground. Even the environment has changed so much. It's changed in the city after the explosion. It's even changed in so much of the nature. We've seen so many fires. On top of this, so many of our friends and our families have been leaving to go abroad to look for new opportunities. In fact, many things have changed, but today we're not gonna look at the things that have changed, but we're gonna look at some of the things that haven't changed. We're gonna look at them and learn from them and see how this applies to our lives. In fact, there's one thing in particular I wanna look at, which is the cedar tree of Lebanon. You see, the cedar tree of Lebanon is an icon of the country. It's even the emblem of the flag, and so many of us are so proud of this tree. But what makes this tree so special? Is it the beauty of the tree? Is it the size of the tree? Is it the fact that it only grows four centimeters a year? Is it the fact that it grows in the harshest environments in Lebanon and continues to grow? Is it the fact that it's a thousand of years old and that it's outlived generations and civilizations in this nation and across the region? I guess all of those reasons and even more make it so special. You see, there's a lot that we can actually learn from the cedar tree. And today, we're going to look at the different stages of growth of the cedar tree. And we're going to look at how we can learn from that. But first, let me ask you some questions for you to reflect upon. Have you ever thought about your roots, your foundations? What are your foundations built upon and what are they holding on to? And where are you growing from? Now, before any tree can grow, first, a seed needs to be planted into the ground. That goes for any tree, including a cedar tree. When the seed is planted in the ground, the life in the seed meets the conditions for it to start to grow. But something amazing happens in the seed. Let me explain. The seed is made up of two main parts, the inner part called the embryo and the outer part called the endosperm. Now, when the seed comes into the ground, First, the outer part of the seed must die and break away for the inner part to start to grow. If the outer part of the seed doesn't break, then the inner part cannot grow. And that's why Jesus says this. He says this in John chapter 12, verse 24. I tell you the truth. Unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new lives. You see, Jesus was firstly talking about himself. Last month in our Easter message, titled Dead or Alive, Roy talked to us about the death and resurrection of Jesus and what God did through that. God sent his son Jesus to live on earth as a man under the law, and he was perfectly righteous. He died on the cross with our sins, but he didn't stay dead. He was resurrected and raised back to life. You see, that's why he says that a seed first needs to die so that it can bring forth life. Now, through our faith in Jesus, through his death and resurrection, we can also be like that seed. You see, although the outer part is dying, the inner part, through faith in Jesus' death and resurrection, can be brought back to life. You see, we can be resurrected with Christ. We can be born again. Now, thanks to Jesus, we can experience this eternal life. Before this tree starts to grow, this seed needs to come to life. And the way we do this is by believing in what Jesus did for us on the cross, cross through his death and resurrection, and by saying it with our mouths, that he is resurrected and he is Lord. You see, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him would not perish, but have eternal life. And I invite you to experience this eternal life right now. You see, last month, 
we talked about death and life. And this, this month, we're going to talk about how we can grow in the eternal abundant life that Jesus bought for us. So now that the seed is planted, what happens next? The seed can start to grow roots and eventually it starts to grow upwards. So let's talk about the first stage of this growth. Let's talk about the upwards growth of this cedar tree. In order for any tree, big or small, to grow, first the roots need to grow downwards before it can start to grow upwards. For any tree to withstand the seasons and the storms and the generations and the civilizations, it needs to have strong roots. And that is the first thing that needs to grow. The roots are so important. In fact, even though they're not visible, they carry a necessary function for the tree. And today we're, we're going to look at these two functions, which is the roots as the support for the tree to stand and the roots which grow deep into the ground and absorb water and absorb nutrients that help the tree to grow. And we're going to learn from those things. We're going to see how we can learn from those. So let's look at the first function, the roots for the support of the tree. In our lives, just like the cedar tree, before we can start to grow upwards with this new life, our roots need to start growing downwards. Now the cedar tree holds on to the soil beneath it, but what do we hold on to? Siela, please read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. The cedar tree, when it grows roots, holds on to the soil. But when we start to grow our roots downwards, we hold on to the love of God. Now I'm going to say this, just because a tree is taller, it doesn't make it stronger. You see, I remember the story that Roy once told me about these two plants that he grew in his garden. As he kept looking at them, he saw that one plant was growing much taller than the other. And he thought, wow, this is such a beautiful plant. It's such a better plant than the small one. One night after a windy night, he, he woke up the next morning and went to his garden. He found a tall plant dead on the ground, out of the ground. But the small plant was still standing there as if nothing had happened. It turns out that the taller tree wasn't actually the stronger tree nor the better tree. But the shorter tree was because it had deep roots. And there are two things I want to I take from this story and I want to explain. Number one, roots take time to grow. It takes seasons and seasons for a tree's roots to grow deep and for the tree to grow upwards. It doesn't happen immediately. And it doesn't matter how tall the tree grows, but it matters how strong the roots grow downwards. Now the second thing I want to point out is that without roots, the external factors will immediately affect the tree. See, the wind will push down the tree and the storms will break the tree. But with deep roots, the tree doesn't move. And just the same way, when we have deep roots in the love of God, we don't move when outside circumstances start to affect us. Now, you're probably going to ask me, practically speaking, what does this mean for my life? And I'm glad you asked, so let me answer. It means that when we truly begin to believe in the love of God and see how much God loves us, we start to see how much He has already done to help us through the, through the circumstances we're facing right now and the circumstances that we are going to face. No matter how bad the storms, the wind, the sun, the rain, the snow, the lightning, no matter how bad, the roots keep the tree standing. And just the same way, no matter how bad the economy, the price of fuel, no matter how bad the job market, no matter how bad the politics of the country, your deep roots in the love of God can keep you standing. You see, I want to look at the second function we talked about. So we talked about the roots as the support system for the tree to keep standing. But I also want to talk about the second function, which is the roots which grow deep and help the tree to absorb water and nutrients, which feed the tree so the tree can grow. We just read Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, and it says, Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust in Him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. Siela, please continue to read the passage in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 through to 20. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, 
how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to understand fully. Then you be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than what may, we might ask or think. You see, having deep roots as a support makes us truly understand what God is willing and able to do for us. But I love what Paul is saying here because he says that love is not only something to believe in, but it's something to experience. And when we start to believe in the love of God, we can experience the power and goodness of God in our lives. We can start to see Him do amazing things in our lives. You see, His power is real and His power is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or think or imagine in this world right now. His love is real and it's able to transform our lives. It's able to change our hearts. His love has the power to keep us safe and protect us. His love has the power to keep us healthy. His love has the power to support us financially and to supply all of our needs. And His love has the power to help us live a peaceful and joyful life. You see, when the roots of the cedar tree absorb the right nutrients from the ground, nothing can stop the growth of the tree. No external factor can stop it. And when you start to absorb the love of God in your life, nothing can stop your growth and nothing can stop you from experiencing the goodness and power of God in your life, no matter where you are. In fact, let me share this. Out of all trees, the Lebanese cedar tree is one of the few trees that continues to grow through every season. Through summer and through winter, it keeps growing. When so many other trees lose their leaves in winter, and barely make it through the winter. They're just trying to survive. But the Lebanese cedar continues to grow and continues to flourish and be beautiful. You see, deep roots in the love of God is a link between us and God to receive His power and receive His goodness. It's just the same way that metal conducts electricity. It's just the same way that when we put a straw in a glass, the bigger the straw, the more we can absorb. And the deeper our roots the more we can absorb the love of God and the power of God into our lives. Matt, please read Romans chapter 8, verse 28. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are His lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purposes. You see, Paul is saying that we can be convinced that God's perfect plan for our lives is for good things to happen. We don't have to doubt it. We can just believe it and know it. And that's what happens when we have strong roots as a, as a support system, our strong roots in the love of God. But let me say something that's even better. Because God loves us, we can also experience this goodness and experience this power no matter where we are, even if we're in the harshest environments, just like the cedar tree. You see, difficult external seasons don't have to stop you from experiencing the goodness and the power of God and experiencing the good and perfect plan that He has for your life. Right now, I know that being in Lebanon is difficult. But when we are rooted in the love of God, we can be convinced that there are good things that we can expect. We can expect to see God move in powerful ways in our life. Even though it seems impossible, through our faith in His love and what He's done for us through Jesus, we can expect good things to happen and we can look for them. You see, sometimes where we are is not where we want to be, but deep roots in the love of God will support us no matter where we are and will get us through hard circumstances. And deep roots in the love of God will help us absorb the power of God and the goodness of God in our lives, no matter where we are. So just like a cedar tree that starts to grow, eventually its branches reach out and its branches have leaves that are green all year because they expect the sun all year. And just the same way, we can expect 
to receive blessing after blessing because God is good and God has a good and perfect plan for your life. And you're able to prosper no matter where you are, no matter what the circumstances are around you. You see, when we start to believe in the love of God in our hearts, we start to expect to see it with our eyes. Now, let me share this Bible illustration with you from the book of the Acts of the Apostles. In Acts chapter 12, we see that Peter was thrown into prison and was going to be executed the next day, even though he didn't do anything wrong. And in Acts 16, we see that Paul and Silas were beaten in public and were thrown into jail, even though they didn't do anything wrong. As I mentioned to you last year in an earlier message, sometimes we are put into bad situations and we are in hard circumstances, not because of, we, because of anything that we did wrong, but because of things that people have done and circumstances have, have happened around us. Now, does that sound familiar to you in Lebanon? You see, during the time that they were jailed, Paul and Silas were singing and praising God and Peter was asleep. Now, let me ask you, if you were in their position, what would you be doing? Would you be worrying? Would you be scared? Would you be singing? Would you be asleep? Now, the fact is that Paul and Silas, after being beaten pub in public, were singing. And Peter, awaiting his execution the next day, was sleeping. Now, if they weren't convinced that God loved them and God would deliver them, would they be doing those things? You see, no matter how hard it was, no matter how impossible it seemed, they were so rooted in the love of God and so convinced that God was able to deliver them and that He would, and they would see His love in action. And they did, and He delivered them. You see, at that very moment, miracles happen in impossible situations in both of those stories. Chains broke, chains fell off them. The prison doors opened and they were set free. You see, they experienced the miraculous power of the love of God. And you can experience it too. You see, Paul himself says that love never fails. And in that situation, the love of God didn't fail him. You see, love drives out fear. And when we believe and when we are rooted in the love of God, we don't have to be afraid in any situation. Having roots in the love of God means that no matter what's happening, no matter what circumstance we're in, no matter where we are, we can be convinced that God can deliver us and we can experience God's power wherever we are. You see, it's funny when I look back at the times when I started walking with God. I didn't really have deep roots in the love of God, but I was walking with Him. I didn't truly understand how much God loved me, how much He cared for me in every situation. I was kind of like that plant, the tall plant that I told you in Roy's story, without deep roots. And the fact is, when circumstances came, it was really difficult. You see, I wasn't rooted in God's love. I was rooted in, in my environment, in my achievements, in my relationships, and in my circumstances. But like I mentioned, in my situation, I wasn't a cedar tree with deep roots. But when hard times did come, they would leave me shaken to my core. They would, they would leave me depressed for weeks on end. They would really affect me. And I would look for different solutions in different places and never really come out of it fully. The more I started walking with God, the more I started understanding that He loved me. The more I started understanding that He cares about me and cares about every part of my life. And He wants to help me and He has a good plan for every part of my life. Now, the more faith I had for good things to happen, the more I started seeing good things happen in my life. The more I started experiencing His power, not only in my life, but for people around me too. And this doesn't happen overnight. Just like a cedar tree takes so much time to grow, we also take time to establish our roots in the love of God and keep growing upwards. And I can say that I've grown, but I still have so much, to, so much room for growth. But I can tell you this, that if you told me five years ago that, hey, you would be in Lebanon when the economy would go into hyperinflation in the first year of your marriage with such a tough work environment. Oh, and by the way, you would be here when one of the largest explosions in history just happens in the middle of a city. 
and you would be here through all these difficulties. I don't know, to be honest, how I would have handled it. But thanks to the, to the roots that I started growing in the love of God, He's been keeping me strong. And not only that, but I have been seeing His goodness through all of the difficulties. I've been seeing His goodness in so many different areas of my life. You see, the, the strong winds, the ones would have destroyed the baby cedar, don't seem so strong to a big cedar with deep roots. I can also say this, that being part of a loving church family has helped my roots in God's love grow so much faster. It's just like someone caring for a tree and putting fertilizer on the roots of a tree and giving it room to grow without obstructions. That's how it feels. But let me remind you this. Hard times come to every single person. No matter how deep your roots are, no matter how tall the tree is, hard times come. And it matters how deep our roots are at that moment so that we can withstand the difficult and harsh environment. And it also matters when our roots are deep that we are able to experience the goodness and power of God through those harsh environments and harsh weathers. I want to take this illustration further about the growth of a cedar tree. You see, it's quite well known that a cedar tree, for the first thousand years of its life, grows upwards. But then, after the thousand years, it mainly starts to grow outwards. You see, when it grows upwards, it gets stronger and stronger. The tree starts to withstand all, sto all sorts of storms, and it's able to, to keep growing and getting taller and bigger, no matter what the circumstances. But when it starts to grow outwards, it starts to impact the environment around it. You see, the leaves that fall fertilize the earth beneath it. The branches that get bigger and bigger leave room for housing for birds. And the shade that it creates allows the animals on the ground to have shelter and to have home. But how does that relate to our growth? You see, this is a very important image of how the love of God grows within us. You see, the Apostle John tells us that God is love. And we know that when we are born again, the nature of God and the love of God is planted in our hearts and in our lives, and it just starts to mature. And when it matures, it not only allows us to grow up personally as we've been discussing, it, discussing and to experience the power and love of God, but as it matures in us, it starts to grow outwards. We start to look at our environment. And we start to look at the world around us the way God sees the world around us. You see, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. This kind of love is a giving love. We're not only supposed to think of our own situation, but eventually, when the love of God grows in us enough, we start to think of others. We start to think in what ways we can love them and support them and help them. And the fact is, the more that we receive in our lives from God, the more we're able to give and support others around us. I want to share the story of Joseph with you, which ties up all of these stages of growth that we've looked at. Now, Joseph was one of the 12 sons of Jacob, and he was actually the favorite son of Jacob. Joseph was a special child, and on two occasions he had visions from God. And those visions showed him that he would experience future success and future leadership position within, within his family. You know, because of that, his brothers, who were already jealous of him, hated him even more. And they took him and sold him into slavery in Egypt, and then lied to their father and said that he was dead and he was eaten by a wild animal. Even though he was in this mess, God was still helping Joseph. You see, when he was in slavery in Egypt, he built a great relationship with his master, and his master started giving him responsibilities. But after a while, the master's wife lies about Joseph and gets him thrown into jail. And even in that mess, God was still helping Joseph. You see, Joseph built a great relationship with the prison keeper, and he became the overseer of the prison. He found favor wherever he went in whatever bad situation he was in. Now, eventually, he helps these two prisoners who worked directly for the Pharaoh. And one of them gets their position back. 
And they were supposed to help Joseph by putting a good word in for the, to the Pharaoh about Joseph to help Joseph out. And then he, he forgets Joseph for two whole years. Eventually, after that mess, waiting two years, finally, this man remembers Joseph and tells the Pharaoh about Joseph. He introduces Joseph to the Pharaoh. And Joseph, thanks to God, helps the Pharaoh interpret a dream, which eventually saves Egypt from a terrible famine. Thanks to this, Joseph is made the second in command over the whole of Egypt. He was under only the Pharaoh and was responsible for all of the Pharaoh's affairs. You see, with God's help through Joseph, Egypt prospered in a time of famine. Now, you see in this story that Joseph keeps getting put into terrible situation after terrible situation, year after year. And many of us in Lebanon can relate to this story because of the terrible situations that we are being put through year after year. Not because of anything you've done, but because of circumstances around us. Now, throughout all of this difficulty, the betrayal of the brothers of Joseph, the betrayal of the master's wife, the betrayal of the man who he helped in jail and forgot about him. It could have been so easy for Joseph to disconnect from God and stop believing that God had a good plan for his life. But the fact is, Joseph held on to the promises that God made him. And Joseph was rooted in the love of God and knew that God was with him. God was for him and God was helping him through those situations to get to a better place. Finally, after years and years, Joseph started off as a slave in Egypt and he became the second in command in a place where he arrived in the most difficult circumstance without even his own freedom. Now, I want to take this illustration further and show you what it means to grow outwards with the love of God. You see, eventually in this story, the famine that was going to hit Egypt also hits other nations around it and including the nation where Joseph's family was. So his brothers come down to Egypt because they hear that there's still food in Egypt, so maybe they can buy some. They end up dealing with Joseph and they have no idea of Joseph's, Joseph's position in Egypt. So effectively, they're at the mercy of Joseph. Now, Joseph reacted with love. And instead of turning them away without food or throwing them in jail and letting the whole family starve, he responds to them with love. He helps them by providing food even though they put him in a terrible situation. His love grew outwards towards people around him. Julie, please read Genesis chapter 50, verses 19 through to 21. Joseph replied, don't be afraid. Do I act for God? Don't you see you planned evil against me, but God used those same plans for my good. As you see all around you right now, life for many people, easy now, you have nothing to fear. I'll take care of you and your children. He reassured them, speaking with them heart to heart. You see, the love of God in Joseph not only grew upwards, it not only helped him through the mess year after year to come to a better position and to see provision for himself and to see a position and good plans for him. Just like the cedar tree, after a while, his love started to grow outwards and he was able not only to help himself, but to help the nation of Egypt, to help his family through a famine, and to help all the nations around Egypt through a famine. Joseph was rooted in the love of God, and he believed that the power of God was able to help him in that situation. And the power of God was able to work through all the bad things that happened, not only to help him, but through him to help others. Joseph could have so easily missed what God was trying to do for him, if his perspective was different, he was looking the other direction and he kept looking at his circumstances. And Joseph could have easily missed what God was trying to do through him for others if he was not rooted in the love of God and he didn't see his brothers and his family and the nation where he was a slave. If he didn't see them through the eyes of God with the love of God, he could have missed what God was trying to do. Just like the cedar tree, what we hold on to and what we absorb the term is what we look at and where we're going. And just like the cedar tree, our growth upwards and our growth outwards starts with the roots. So let me ask you, what are your roots holding on to? 
and what are your roots absorbing on a daily basis? The story of Joseph applies in our lives today. You see, when we see the world the way God sees the world, we love and we help and we care about His perfect plan for ourselves and His perfect plan for everyone else around us. Now, what would happen if every single person in Lebanon was rooted in the love of God and was able to see Lebanon and the people in Lebanon the way God sees the people in Lebanon? You see, whatever those around us are putting us through, God has a perfect plan for us and that doesn't stop us from growing in the love of God and experiencing the power of God in our lives. And whatever the devil is doing to affect Lebanon and to hurt the people in Lebanon, God can use us through the love that we're rooted in to help those around us, to support our, us and our families and the people in Lebanon. But first, our roots need to be deep into the love of God. Remember this, what we hold on to and what we absorb determines what we look at and where we're going. Now, after all of this, you might turn around to me and say, hey, I'm not a tree. You're right. I don't want you to be like a tree. I want you to be like a cedar tree of Lebanon. I want you to be rooted deep into the love of God. I want to see you grow stronger and stronger and taller and taller in the love of God and experience His power and goodness in your lives. I want your branches to reach out all year with green leaves all year expecting blessing after blessing in your life because that's what God promised you and that's what God wants for you and I want you to grow outwards with the love of God so that you don't only have enough for yourself but you have even more for those around you but first you need to be rooted in the love of God first we need to see where we are planted and where we are rooted so let me ask you again have you ever thought about your foundations and your roots? What are your roots holding on to? Where are you growing from and where are you growing towards? Thank you so much for listening to me today. I wish you an amazing day. Thank you, Gilbert, for this wonderful message. I hope this message touched you the way God has touched Gilbert's life and my life as well. As we saw in the message, our roots need to grow deep in God's love so that we can keep going stronger and stronger thanks to Him and so that we can begin to experience good things in our life. See, what's amazing about God's love is that not only does it bring us into a better situation, but as it keeps growing, it influences us to help others. I look around me right now in Lebanon and I see a lot of people in need, I see a lot of fear, see a lot of hard times. I myself have had hard times and a lot of fears and worries in many different areas. But just the way God came through in Gilbert's life, He can come through in my life and your life. All I know is that God's love has helped me grow upwards to bring me into a better situation and outwards to help others through me. And you can have the same thing. We mentioned that in the beginning of the message, roots cannot grow until a seed is planted into the ground. And the first step to do this is to believe and receive what Jesus did for us by His death and resurrection. So if you want to plant this seed today and you want to receive Jesus, just repeat after me. God, I thank you for your love. I thank you that I am rooted in your love. I know that no matter how strong the storm hits or how hard times get, I am not moved because my roots are in you and not myself. Because you love me so much that you gave me your only son to die for me on the cross. I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins and was raised back to life on the third day. And now, Father, my roots are in your love. Amen. If you prayed this prayer, congratulations. Welcome home. This is the beginning of something that is amazing. And now you have planted that seed. You see, this is not the end of your journey, but the beginning of your journey with God. 
And if you remember what Gilbert said of the message, that being part of the church helped his roots grow in God's love so quickly. And we also mentioned that a plant needs to be watered and taken care of. And likewise, the church is a place where you can be watered and cared for. Guys, we care about you. We as a church, we care about you. And we want to get to know you. And we want you to reach out. So reach out to us on WhatsApp, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, or YouTube. I just want to take a moment to ask you something. Please subscribe to any of those channels. And let me explain why. You see guys, we put a lot of love and a lot of time into these messages. And when you subscribe, you let us know that all the work that we put in has had an impact on your life. And when you subscribe, it makes us understand that you want us to give you more messages. So we'd really appreciate it if you subscribe because it's a big support for us. So thank you in advance for subscribing. I just want to remind my Go Church family to bring their tithes, to set their tithes and offerings aside and bring them along the next time we meet. I tithe and I offer it not because the church told me so. They don't tell me so. I do it because it's my way of giving back to God. You see, everything that I own was a blessing from God and was given to me by God. And by trusting Him with every area of my life, including my finances. It's my way of telling God that I trust Him with everything, that my faith is in Him with everything. Now, in closing our service today, I want to give you a word of encouragement. You see, the cedar of Lebanon is used in the Bible to provide a symbol of status, power, strength, and prosperity. And so I'm going to read a few verses from Psalm 92. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. You see, this refers to you and me. We can be planted in the house of the Lord. And we can grow tall like the cedars of Lebanon. So no matter what's happening around you, we can be rooted in God's love. So thank you so much for watching our message and taking the time to do it. God bless you.